Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more Chaos P2. I am absolutely rammed full of some virus or another at the moment, so you will have to excuse me if I sound a bit different. But yes, recently I did a video where I looked at the Four Science update for Chaos P2, and uh, apparently it had fixed a lot of the major bugs, so I wanted to test if that was true, and it seems to be, but I got a number of comments sort of saying, yeah, but... What about the re-entry heating? Because re-entry heating was added to KSP2 in the Force Science update, and a lot of people are saying it's a little much. In the background, you can see a very simple test I just quickly did, uh, just taking a simple capsule straight up and letting it fall back down again. We're going to be doing something a little bit more targeted uh, in the video today. Um, also, today's video, completely post-commentary, so... Um, yeah, going a bit Matt Lown on your ass. Um, I mean, well, apart from, you know, the subscriber numbers and the income and the skill and the talent, but apart from that, indistinguishable. Um, yeah, let's get started. So, to perform the first couple of experiments, I am launching my trusty Brunel Mark II. I say trusty Brunel Mark II. Uh, on the first time of loading, uh, like I think for the last video, it just explodes. It just goes absolutely nuts and blows up. But, um, yeah, mysteriously, on subsequent loadings, it's absolutely perfectly behaved. I don't know what that is. Little bug in there, but not the one we're interested in. Yes, we are launching this because this is just an easy way to put um, put one of my little standard space vehicles in orbit, um, standard CSM, and um, have plenty of Delta V left over so that we can uh, so that I could do what I had planned. Uh, the first of which is not going to use any of that spare Delta V. We are just going to get our little. Um, on heat shielded space capsule and drop it from space pretty much like we did with the intro video but sort of do a proper dig orbit so it was about 82 kilometers in uh, in altitude i dropped it down to as close to uh perepsis of zero as i could get just to um just to give us a, a recreatable reference point and then i just let the thing drop into the atmosphere now this is quite an aggressive re-entry, uh, the, uh, the point isn't to see whether or not I can survive this, it's to get sort of a reproducible reference point so I can sort of objectively, as, not as close as possibly, objectively answer the question, is the heating in KSP2 worse than KSP1? And it's not long before we run into some issues, at about 55 kilometers in altitude, the little heating bar uh, makes itself known. We're just starting to bleed off speed there. <laughs> While I was playing through this, I was actually hopeful. I was hopeful all the way down. Uh, we get down to just under 35 kilometers before the thing explodes. We're bleeding off speed at a reasonable rate, but no. Kaboom. Uh, I think I could have done better than that with a less aggressive re-entry. I'm not sure whether I could have actually survived the descent with this capsule, but well, you know that's not what we're trying to find out here. Switching back to the original version, pretty much the same thing, a simple space capsule, no heat shield, 82 kilometers up, uh, periapsis down to zero, and let's see what the atmosphere can do to it, and um, yeah, we just keep descending, we keep descending, we pass the 55 kilometer mark, the 40 kilometer mark, all that stuff, it very clearly becomes apparent that there is absolutely no issue with this thing going down with the heating at all. That question pretty thoroughly answered, and also maybe a little bit of an insight into why the heating's worse in KSP2, because in real life, there's no way you are going to get an unshielded capsule back down from orbit in one piece. No, that is going to be dust and ash. Um, so maybe, you know, it, difficulty has increased in that regard, but maybe it's a reasonable increase. I'll leave that to you to decide. Um, but anyway, yes, I want to sort of probe this heating issue a little bit more. A quick revert to quick save later, and we are back up in orbit. This time we are going to use that uh, that excess delta V to push our apoapsis up to as high as we can get it while still being in um, in Kerbin's sphere of influence. It's a little bit buggy actually trying to work out when it is and it isn't, because um, there are there are times when it says it is and it isn't, <laughs> which I found out the hard way. But regardless, we are going to use this to test aero braking because this isn't actually a comment I had. This is just something I've seen in other videos where people well. <laughs> The implication seems to be that if you so much as touch the atmosphere at high speeds, then you're just going to explode. So I just want to see what happens. Um, to, to start off with, I set the uh, set our, uh, our periapsis down to about 60 kilometers, and we're going to go sort of engines first because they tend to be the most heat resistant part of the uh, of the spacecraft. And the air braking procedure goes pretty well. I mean, the, uh, the solar panels do show signs of heating up. None of the other, uh, none of the other parts do. Uh, I did do some more attempts at this, and it turns out if you just spin the craft along the um, longitudinal axis, that uh, solar panel heating goes away. But before too long, we're heading back up out of the atmosphere, and you know, with no ill effects. 
For the second attempt, I notched the periapsis down to 55 kilometers, and this is where things got interesting. Um, solar panels heated up, I did the rolling trick, that took care of that. The engine was taking the brunt of the heating as planned, and things seemed to be going real, really well. We got through the, uh, the lowest point in our descent, we started to gain altitude, and then our engine exploded, which, I'm not gonna lie, kind of annoyed me. Uh, but yeah, then we carried off into space without any, um, without any further issues. Um, but I, I wanted another go at this. I got so close the previous time, I was determined to get it uh, a second time around. Um, this time I channeled my inner Anakin Skywalker and decided that spinning was a good trick um, just to spread the re-entry heating around. Uh, like the previous time, we get past periapsis and uh, like, like, like the previous time, then the engine went. Then quite a lot of other stuff went as well. Um, okay, I not gonna get a success with this one. Aero braking as a whole, um, doable, but I would be very careful and I wouldn't lean too heavily on it for your, uh, for your manoeuvre plans. Um, anyway, moving on. So next up I wanted to give my, uh, my space plane, my SSTO, uh, the Kestrel, uh, a little bit of a shot at re-entry. Put it on quite an aggressive re-entry again, um, because, you know, the heating's worse, but I think it's more than manageable for my uh, my conventional rockets and the associated craft, but this thing's built a little bit more delicately, so I was kind of worried about this one. It is an aggressive re-entry, but I, I know that my um, KSP-1 version of this craft could handle this quite easily, but uh, yeah, I wanted to see what would happen in KSP-2. The heating bars appeared about 60 kilometers in altitude, which was not a good sign. Uh, lost one of the canards fairly early on. Not the other one. The other one survived for quite a while. Um, but eventually, uh, <laughs> I should add, I forgot where the resources manager was in the KSP2 UI, so uh, this and the next thing I do, no idea where that was, and it causes a few problems. Well, it causes a few problems this time, not so much like, well, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, eventually I can't really hold on to the craft, it kind of flips out, a lot of stuff blows up, and the whole thing ends up going backwards. Uh, I did use what remaining fuel I had to sort of try and slow this down. I was going to bail out the Kerbals. Uh, I bailed out Hangen Kerman and uh, then then realised they haven't implemented parachutes in KSP2 yet, have they? I've just I've just sent this one to his death. <laughs> and his crewmate, of course, aboard the uh, aboard the little space plane, probably going to meet a similar fate. Anyway, um, I wanted another go at this. Second time around, I was much less aggressive with the altitudes, and this was much better. I uh, did get some heating bars on the clouds, but I just lowered my angle of attack, and that sorted that out. Uh, it was all going well. It was all going really well, but uh, as I mentioned about the stability issues with this craft, um, yeah, we got down to about 45 kilometers in altitude, and then Anakin Skywalker made another appearance, this time uninvited. Um, but it, it kind of worked. I mean, I span out, I lost a load of speed, and that, that sorted us right out. No real heating issues at all. Um, yeah, I have, I have found out where the, uh, where the resource manager is now, by the way. Um, but yeah, uh, I really could have done with it even later on in this, because this thing was just hideous to fly in the atmosphere. Miraculously, I did manage to get it back to the runway and actually land at the KSC properly, but God knows how I did it. Anyway, yes, space planes! Tricky but doable. Uh, but there's one last thing I want to take a look at. One comment I did get on my last KSP2 video was someone saying they were trying to send stuff up in a fairing, but the stuff just kept burning up and exploding inside the fairing on the way to orbit. So I thought, well, let's see if we can give that a test. I um, got a little bit of a payload. I stuck some delicate things on it, a couple of solar panels, a couple of antennae, uh, stuck it in a fairing and stuck that on top of the base of my uh, base of my Brunel Mark II rocket, which is massive overkill for a payload like this. And yeah, just set it on upwards. I tried to uh, tried to keep it as shallow, uh, as shallow an ascent as possible, just to try and get as much speed as possible and as thick an atmosphere as possible, but nothing. Not a dicky bird, not the slightest hint of a heating bar. Um, so I, yeah, I cannot recreate that, I'm afraid. Um, I did actually just decide I'm gonna shed the fairing. The fairing went a bit buggy here, but it still uh, still seemed to do its job. I decided just to ditch the fairing and just send this down into the atmosphere, pretty much as it was, just to make sure that, uh, just to make sure that the stuff uh, I expected to explode does explode, and uh, it kind of did. Um, but yeah. In summary then, heating. Uh, is it worse? Yes. Is it absolutely ridiculous and obscene? No. No. You're going to have to be more careful in certain situations, but 
I mean, you can almost say it's closer to where it should be, really, but I think that's a discussion for another day. Anyway, well, that will be all for today. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, following me on Twitter, maybe getting involved with the Discord, Great KSP and BD Army community on there, and more besides. Uh, all those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Uh, you too can get your own little patron Kerbal. Uh, not on KSP2. Haven't worked out how to do it there. Not even sure there is a way to do it here, but as soon as there is, they'll be in KSP2. As well as your name at the end of videos, access to the Patreon and your Discord. Access to everything I upload to Patreon, those last two. Not a lot to see there just at the moment, but hopefully soon. Um, yes, and all your kind contributions help me to keep this channel running and hopefully grow it into something bigger and better. Uh, I will be back soon with some more KSP stuff, but uh, until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.